vaccinations of children, and Edward Jenner. In the topic of art and medicine, paintings that deal with medical issues usually have two categories of timing. The first category is the paintings related to anatomy or body functions, which were done before the development of modern science and advanced medical imaging and are based on the physiological or physical of the painter's imagination from the human corpse or the recorded history of diseases as seen in da Vinci's paintings and therefore, it may not be entirely in line with proven scientific facts. The second category is paintings related to surgical operations or preventive and therapeutic measures, and not anatomy, diseases that, because painting was prevalent at the same time, can be said that the subtleties of painting are in accordance with known principles. Now, with such an introduction, we will discuss the category of vaccination, the discovery of vaccination in the world has a long history because infectious diseases are as old as human history. When vaccination and the discovery of a solution to deal with infectious diseases became one of the biggest concerns of humans, a plural of artists started to record the events by creating paintings related to vaccination. Paintings related to vaccination date back to the 18th century and the following can be deduced from the study and analysis of these works. The disease that has a direct connection with the discovery of the vaccine is smallpox. This contagious disease killed about 100,000 people in a century. The history of smallpox has a unique place in medicine. This disease was one of the deadliest diseases known to humans. The fatality rate of smallpox stood at 30%, meaning that 3 in 10 infected individuals would lose their lives to this devastating illness. Therefore, a simple discovery not only stopped the spread of this disease, but led to its complete eradication. The discovery of vaccination saved the lives of millions of population and prevented the suffering of plenty of people. One of the interesting points in the history of modern medicine is that, contrary to the imagination of non-specialists, the method of inoculation or vaccination became popular before the discovery of the cause of diseases. That is, before mankind understood the cause of smallpox with the advancement of medical science, he had discovered vaccination based on experience. Seventy years before the scientific discoveries of Dr. Pasteur and Dr. Koch, and before humans realized the existence of microscopic monsters in their blood, vaccination was common and mandatory in parts of Europe. The history of inoculation in the modern age reaches the last years of the 18th century, when people attempted to prevent the spread of smallpox in Europe and America. The root of the invention of vaccination lay in this simple knowledge. If someone was infected with smallpox and survived, he would no longer die from smallpox and would be immune to it. For this reason, in parts of Asia in the previous centuries, before Europe, a healthy person was infected with the pus that it was from the smallpox of a sick person to make him immune to the disease. In 1712, the 24-year-old lady Mary Wortley Montagu, a famous English poet, ventured to Turkey with her husband, the British ambassador. During their time in Turkey, Mary observed that the sum of Turkish population remains unaffected by smallpox, a terrible severely disfiguring illness that killed thousands of people in England every year and that also affected her face. Soon, she noticed that the white-haired women of the tribes had an official called inoculation and the significance of inoculation in preventing illness became evident to her as she observed how the white hair women of the tribes actively engage in this protective procedure. Mary believed that this ceremony will protect them from smallpox. Every year, the members of the clan pick someone who is likely to be infected with smallpox for this event. Then the white haired woman arrived with a special liquid she had in the closed container. After lancing the hand of the chosen individual, she distributed the liquid across the pricked region. At the same time, the tribe members were singing and clapping. After the ceremony, that person had a slight fever. 
he would spend an entire day or two in bed, and would eventually get up, and continue his life, the locals said, that he would never get sick again. Mary wondered if this method could be effective in England. When she returned to England in 1713, she lectured on the effectiveness of this method, but her theory was ridiculed. In 1714, a princess from the state of Wales heard Mary's speech and allowed her to perform this experiment on homeless and orphaned children. Mary accumulated the secretion emanating from the injuries of ailing individuals with this particular illness, which she subsequently dispensed to several children. The death rate of children who were vaccinated was much lower than others. But there was another problem. Engaging in contact with the wounds and bodily fluids of ill individuals was an extremely hazardous behavior. Some patients died as a result of inoculation, because inoculation was an ancient method of preventing smallpox and using this method brought its own risks. One of these risks was the fear of being infected, because by performing this procedure on the patient, his disease might spread to other people. In 1794, a young English doctor and surgeon named Edward Jenner, who was practicing medicine in rural areas, noticed that milkmaids never got smallpox, but instead of contracting smallpox, developed a condition called cowpox, a disease that blistered their hands. Jenner concluded that cowpox must be related to smallpox, and that having it would make a person immune to smallpox. Jenner's hypothesis was that the primary source of smallpox infection was horses, which were transferred to cattle by farm workers, and then manifested as cowpox. Edward Jenner performed his first vaccination process on May 14, 1796, on an eight-year-old boy named James Phipps, who was the son of his gardener. At first, Jenner extracted pus from smallpox blisters from the hand of a milkmaid named Sarah Nelms, who had contracted cowpox from a cow. On that day, Jenner injected Phipps into both hands, which caused him to develop a fever and some discomfort symptoms, but fortunately, no serious infection was observed. After that, Jenner injected Phipps with various substances that were common immunization methods of the time. Finally, this boy was challenged with various substances in tests and did not show any signs of infection. The positive result from Phipps' test was encouraging to Jenner, but he waited until a second test before announcing his success. This experiment was carried out two years later, and after a second successful inoculation of cowpox and subsequent immunization against smallpox, Jenner prepared a treatise announcing his discovery. Jenner continued his research and reported it to the Royal Society, but it was not published. After revisions and further research, he applied his findings to 23 children, one of whom was his own 11-month-old son Robert. This Jenner's action shows how much he was sure of his achievement and was steadfast and selfless in his medical goal.
In 1800, his research matured and was widely accepted. At that time, in England, there existed legislation safeguarding novel concepts and inventions, enabling him to potentially amass wealth through the legal validation of his innovation. But he had humanitarian ideals and strong beliefs in helping others and stuck to them for his entire life. So, he taught his method to everyone, and this technique quickly spread in Germany. France, Russia, America, and even East Asia were implemented. As in the present time, when vaccination was necessary for an acute and epidemic disease, the relevant teams went to the doors of houses and places of gatherings and carried out vaccinations, and in non-critical times, it was the people who went to the doctors. For this reason, if we consider the state of vaccinations during Edward Jenner's time, it is evident that there were protests, dissent, and hostilities among both individuals and society. Even some of the paintings related to vaccination from that time show that some famous people or social groups were strongly against vaccination and refused to be vaccinated, but failing to receive the smallpox vaccination poses a potential threat to the entire community. So, in certain instances, vaccination was terminated by force and coercion, and individuals were compelled to receive vaccinations against their wishes as the sole means of halting the disease from spreading. Another important and interesting point that draws attention to the details of the vaccination process is that when injecting the vaccine, it should be noted that, in order for the vaccine to be fully effective, the injection should be done perpendicular to the muscles of the body, which this technique is followed in all the paintings. Because the struggle and movement of children during the injection of the vaccine can cause the injection material may spread out and lead to complications, ineffectiveness, and local infections. So upon careful observation of details in paintings of vaccinations, it is noticeable that the children's bodies are well restrained. And the doctor, by having sufficient and proficient control over the child's body, is effectively performing his duty. Finally, the incredible achievements of Edward Jenner made him honored and respected by the most powerful and greatest leaders of the time. Napoleon Bonaparte ensured the health of his soldiers by providing them with vaccinations to prevent diseases. While engaged in a conflict with England, he displayed admiration for Jenner by allowing several of Jenner's friends, who were prisoners of France, to be released without repercussions. The Queen of Russia presented him with a diamond ring as a symbol of appreciation, and Thomas Jefferson, 
The President of the United States, at the time, expressed his admiration through a letter filled with kind compliments.